guys, my name is Hannah, and today I'm going to teach you about water quality. And I'm going to tell you about some pollutants, how they can impact our water, and you guys are going to perform a water quality test yourself. So to begin, can any of you tell me what percent of Earth's surface is covered by water? Yes. 70%. Yes, around 70% of Earth's surface is covered in water. But that includes both salt and fresh water. Salt water which fills up our oceans and fresh water which is in our lakes and streams and what we depend on for daily use. So, I want you guys to imagine that this represents all the water in the world. And what I'm going to pour into the bucket will represent the salt water. And what will remain in the bottle will represent the fresh water. So I want you guys to tell me to stop pouring when you think what's left in the bottle is about equivalent to the percent of water that is fresh on Earth. So just go ahead and give me a shout. Stop. Stop here? No, not yet. Stop. 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 No. No. Stop. No, actually. is fresh, accessible water. So as seen in the demonstration, we have a very limited access to fresh water, but that uh, access is even further limited by pollution. Can any of you guys name any pollutants for me, things that might contaminate water? Oil, yes, the, there's oil spills and oil from cars that can be picked up by runoff. Trash. Trash, yeah, that can enter our waterways too. Gasoline. Yep, gas that might leak out from cars. Pesticides. Pesticides, that's a good one, yes. So really anything can be uh, pollutants. So we have two different types, point source and non-point source. Point source come from an easily identifiable location, such as here. This uh, discharge we can clearly tell is coming from this factory pipe. Non-point source are harder to tell where they entered the environment from such as this oil slick, we're not sure what car it came from, and especially once it enters the water, where, what location it originated from. So, a lot of pollutants, like mentioned trash, can come from runoff. When it rains, the rain water can carry away any contaminants on the road or on the ground in the parking lots and lead them to the storm drains. And those storm drains lead directly <coughs> to nearby lakes and streams, they are not filtered through. So whatever is being collected by that runoff water will go directly into our nearby water body and that eventually will cycle into our drinking water. And a great example of how runoff directly is impacting water is by these elbow booms. A big problem for like Erie, uh, fertilizer runoff, fertilizer that we use for our residential use or agricultural, uh, contains lots of phosphorus and nitrogen which are necessary for plant growth, but when carried away in large quantities by water, they can be deposited into lakes and streams, and as they accumulate, they allow for these algae blooms to grow, cover the surface of the water, and prevent sunlight from accessing the plants underneath, and those plants can't photosynthesize and produce the oxygen needed by the aquatic life. Uh, factories also release uh, discharge of waste materials into water, and that can be a source of where heavy metals come from. And all these different uh, chemicals and pollutants entering the water can mess with the pH. We usually are aiming for a neutral pH of seven. Uh, pH is on a scale of zero to 14. Anything from zero to 6.9 is considered acidic. Anything from 7.1 to 14 is considered basic. So we want pure water to be the neutral seven, but these chemicals can change uh, that pH and that can also be damaging to the wildlife in the water and also a change of pH may make chemicals in the water more toxic than what they already are. So today we're going to be testing our tap water here for pH. 
So first, grab your, grab your gloves and goggles, put those on. This is called our PPE, our personal protective equipment. And while working with these chemicals, it's important to be mindful not to touch your face or anyone around you and be respectful. H is a measure of hydrogen in the water, hydrogen ions. Um, so that can be, um, it's important that it remains at a neutral level. Uh, these changes are more acidic or more basic and depend on how much hydrogen is in the water. So that can grow the ecosystem. So you can open up your kits in front of you. There's two different kits. You may see. One is shaped like this, and we also have the larger reader, but they still will measure the same thing. So first, take your sample water in front of you and fill up your test tube. If you have this kit, you will fill up your small test tube to the black line, and if you have a larger kit, you'll fill up the tall test tube to the 10 millimeter mark. Once you've done that, you have in front of you a wide range indicator, and you're going to add 10 drops of this into your test tube. If you have two bottles, they're the same thing, one just might not be open. So, once you've added those 10 drops, put your cap on your test tube and give it a good shake. So once that's well shaken, you can insert your test tube into your reader and hold it up to the light, a light source, and determine which color best fits, and that will give you your ring. What do you guys think of yours is close to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what about you guys? What do you, what's your rating? Okay. So, it seems like everyone is getting a pH of around 8. The one was around 8.5. So, uh, for EPA drinking water standards, the EPA uh, recommends a pH of 6.5 to 8.5. So does this water meet our EPA standards? Yeah. So this is just one indicator of water quality. Uh, there's plenty of more tests we can run, but this is an important factor. So can any of you guys tell me why water quality is important? Yes. You don't drink something too acidic. Or right. Acidic. Yeah, so you're not drinking contaminated water. Yes. Yeah, so animals can, in the ecosystem, they're in healthy environments. Uh, any other ideas? Yes. Plants need a certain pH level too, so the water affects plants. Yes, water, that does affect the plant growth as well as uh, the other uh, organisms in water. And can you guys tell me, uh, how can we reduce the, the amount of pollutants entering our water? Can we find a way to like, help stop everything, like stop all the rainwater to go away? Up all the trash going the yeah, so if we help clean up, maybe like an eco cleanup or something, be mindful of like littering. Yes. Yep, that, that's important.
more too, the, so that way there's not as much oil entering the wall, like that could be cut off. There's definitely like more plastic and candy and stuff instead of trying to get the garbage or something. Yeah, that's both benefit of recycling and reducing the amount of litter. Uh, find more fuel efficient ways so we have less use, less need of gasoline and oil. Yeah, that would be a great also environmental aspect to reduce water pollution and help the environment. So this is going to conclude our lesson, and you guys can take off your PPE, and we will be pouring our chemicals into our poison.